Hello everyone and welcome to CrabCon 2023. My name is Jessica and we're going to be talking a little bit about our hermit crab's strange behavior and why do they do what they do. Um, the title of my talk today is Getting to Know You Better. Um, so we're going to be just talking a little bit about restless behavior, molting behavior, uh, naked crab, impending molt, croaking or chirping, grooming, carrying eggs, roosting, and why they do it, um, aggression, pecking order, antenna wars, um, and how to identify them from each other, um, and illness. So here we have um, a few pre-molt symptoms. Um, so we have an impending molt. Um, usually when there is an impending molt, they, two weeks prior to their actual molt, um, when they go down, you will see um, your crabs a little restless. Um, they will be um, climbing on the glass, uh, climbing on the lid, trying to escape. Um, doing things that they don't usually do on the wheel quite often. Sometimes you will see them um, day and night on there. Um, then we have gorging of uh, food, sometimes um, not even eating at all. It all depends on the crab. And you do have to keep in mind that not every crab is the same. Some will show these symptoms and some won't even show any at all. So it all depends on the crab. Um, so here you can also see um, on the crab the discoloration. It's um, usually a very big sign of um, a, a impending molt. Um, usually that you will see it on the limbs, um, on the tips of their legs, the, the lighter color um, that just shows that his exoskeleton is getting ready to shed. You can even see um, in the close up picture here with this crab eating, um, you can see his exoskeleton starting to um, detach from his um, from him. So um, that's also a, a sign as well. You will see that um, in, you know, between the joints. So here we have um, some more impending molt um, uh, symptoms like restless behavior we spoke about. Sometimes we will find our uh, crabs on the wheel um, for days at a time and they won't get off. We, we see questions all the time, um, people asking if it's normal for their crabs to be on the wheel so much and not eating or sleeping. Um, they During this time, um, usually these symptoms show up prior to their molt about two weeks before. Um, so they get this big energy um, doing these kind of things like climbing on the glass I mentioned before or on the wall. Um, things that they don't usually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you actually see them do more of it um, during this time. Then you have um, trying to escape, um, practice digging. Sometimes we'll wake up and we'll look in our tank um, and we see um, lots of holes in the substrate. Um, that's just the crab trying to find um, the perfect spot for him to go down. Um, to molt. A lot of shell shopping usually does happen during this time. Um, the crabs will change out um, shells quite often until they find um, the right size. And not all crabs will change before going down to molt. Some of them will um, change when they um, come back up. Um, so it all, like I said, it all depends on the crab. They know what they need and what they want. Um, and I mentioned before the color. Um, in the previous video, you were able to see the, the lighter color um, on his exoskeleton. Um, that is a very big sign of a, a pre molt symptoms. Then we have here on the right side, you see um, the eye stalks. Um, they look a little strange um, and it's completely normal. Some people would think that their crab is sick. Um, and if you can see, his exoskeleton looks like it's detaching. So he's um, getting ready to molt. After this picture I took um, of this crab, he um, uh, went down a few days later. Um, so you can actually see his pupils look as if he's looking an, in an outward position. So um, 
like I mentioned, they do look a little strange. A uh, uh, crab during this time will um, find himself feeling uncomfortable. Um, he'll he you would see like in this picture on the left side bottom, you can see he's actually sitting back on his shell. He was feeling very uncomfortable, and some crabs during this time, like I mentioned before, um, some eat a lot and some don't eat at all. Um, so they would be a little sluggish, and um, so a little bit after that, like I said, this was the same crab that was up on the top right. He did go down to molt a few days later, um, and it was a, a good molt. He came back up six months later. Um, here you can also find um, a lot of um, hanging out of the shell. As you can see here, he was, like I mentioned, he was uncomfortable. Then we have grooming. Grooming um, is um, very fascinating to watch them groom. Um, the fifth um, pyropods are known as a gill cleaner. Um, as gill cleaners and rest on the abdomen. The pyropods are used for more um, for most of the cer um, central and posterior grooming. So they would um, use that little um, that little claw that hands um, to clean on the inside of their shell and on the outside of the shell. It's also called the third pair of walking legs. Um, a lot of us do call it the alien leg because it is a little strange. Um, but very fascinating. Um, they can actually use it um, sometimes as they're walking on the substrate. Um, this crab here, <clears throat> he had just came up from a molt, um, same crab from before. Um, he had um, some extra exoskeleton uh, left over and he was feeling uncomfortable and he was trying to pick at it for quite a bit. Um, and I saw that he was acting a little sluggish. He just kept uh, going at that exo that was um, remaining. So I did end up isolating him. Um, a few days later, he was fine and he um, returned to, to the main tank. Um, but and then in the, you see you can see on the on the video on the right side, uh, he's actually grooming his face. Um, it's pretty amazing to watch. <clears throat> Here you have what we call antenna fencing or antenna wars. Um, this is not aggressive at all. Um, during this time, um, this is just a form of them communicating with each other. Uh, antennas are touching and moving back and forth pretty fast. Um, they are pretty close to each other. Um, they brush up against each other. Um, and um, like I mentioned, it's not aggressive. Sometimes you will see um, this happen when you um, introduce a new crab into the colony, or it can be um, when they when they just come up from a, a molt. Um, they haven't been um, in the colony for a while, so they're just establishing. It's also part of pecking order, which we'll t um, talk about in a little bit. Here we have some aggression. Um, these are some great videos explaining um, what it actually is. Sometimes um, a few people can uh, misinterpret this for mating behavior because it looks a little the same, but it's not. Um, this is actually a form of aggression. Um, the crab is um, um, rocking the other crab um, sometimes when they don't have enough resources or shells um, in your tank, this can happen. Um, so he will continue to rock the crab until he um, exits his shell. So other forms of aggression, as you can see in the right side, is an open claw. Um, when a crab is being backed up into a wall or being bullied by another crab, um, he will feel... Um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be in distress. So he will um, try to attack as well, as you can see the open claw. Other forms of aggression um, would be pulling the other crab out of the shell, which is um, very dangerous. 
um, open claw, like I mentioned. Uh, the aggressor will tap on the other crab's shell with his uh, with his pincer. Um, you will um, sometimes during these occasions you will hear chirping or croaking. Um, that that is a sounds a sounds of um, of distress. So we definitely, if we hear something like that, we want to find out what is going on and address the situation. Um, rocking the shell is what we call shell jacking. So we definitely want to address the situation, make sure that we have plenty of shells in our, in our crab attacks. Um, I, I like to say five to six shells per crab. We want to make sure that the crabs have the correct, um, shells, um, and, uh, sizes, which is a very big, important, um, uh, point. Um, so we want to make sure that, um, if you're not, um, sure about the size, we want to make sure that you can size them correctly. If you're not sure, you can always, um, visit us on our Facebook Lycos group and we will be help. We'll be happy to help. Um, so this is that. Here we have um, chirping or croaking. Um, a crab will make this sound when in distress. So we want to, if we hear the sounds ever occur in our tanks, we want to go and find out what's going on and um, fix the situation so it doesn't um, turn into something um, we don't like. Um, this sound is also made by the rubbing of the appendages. Um, which is, they're so fasc fascinating. They make this sound as a warning. So like I mentioned before, something is wrong. We want to go and find out what it, what it is. Uh, we have to remember that when we're introducing a new crab into um, our enclosures, we want to be present at all times, just in case um, there is any form of aggression. There will be pecking order there might be pecking order, not in all cases. Some crabs adjust very well. Um, and some are territorial because that's what they are by nature. Hermit crabs are territorial. So they um, want to claim their space or um, a certain item or food. So we want to make sure that we have lots of those resources for them in the tank so that they don't feel um, the need to um, fight for those resources. Here we have a naked crab. Um, the purpose of a, of a shell is to protect their abdomen. Their abdomens are very um, fragile. They're very soft. So any type of injury to, um, to their abdomen can cause the crab death. Um, so if you were ever to find yourself um, in a situation with a, with a shellless crab, you definitely want to follow um, the naked crab protocol um, so that we can get that crab back into its shell. Um, the, the, the purpose of a shell is not just for protection, but it also keeps the abdomen from drying out. We know that hermit crabs carry brackish water for molting, um, but it's not just for molting, it keeps their abdomen um, moist so it doesn't dry out. If your crab's abdomen does dry out, um, they most likely will not make it. Um, another thing that can cause your crab to go shellless would be stress. Stress before getting to a pet store. If you are um, seeing that your crab, you're purchasing your crab from a pet store or you've gotten your crab from um, a beet shop, then um, most likely they have, before that process to get to that spot, they have gone through um, quite a bit of stress. If they are coming in painted shells, for example, we know that they have been forced out of those shells and into those um, painted ones. Um, another thing that can cause a crab to go shellless is a lack of proper care. Um, that can, that many things can fall under that category, um, meaning, um, proper diet, um, a proper enclosure. Um, we know that a lot of crab food that is sold at the pet stores, um, are not good for them, can make your crab sick. I don't like to use the word toxic, um, quite often, but, um, to be frank, um, those foods, 99% um, of the time have 
a lots of toxins that can make your crab sick. Um, and they will most likely not make it. Um, physical damage as well. Um, we know that in the beach shops, for example, we've seen them. There are so many crabs um, rammed into one cage. Um, and they can uh, find themselves um, hungry and dehydrated and um, have no other choice but to, um, you know, cannibalism, which is sad. Um, so, you know, they can come injured. They can come with um, lots of injury. Um, we know that when before they get to us, they're coming from the beach shops or pet stores, so they are dehydrated and hungry. Um, so again, making sure that they have the proper nutrition and they go through the PPDS um, process can help them acclimate to their new enclosure. So it wouldn't stress them out as much. So we want to make sure that they're... Um, they're able to adjust to their new environment, environment at their own pace. Um, so PPTS is perfect for that, um, to minimize the, so much stress and help them adjust to their new um, enclosure. Um, other things that can cause a crab to go shellless would be a shell fight. Um, if you don't have enough shells in your um, tank, uh, especially when you first get your crabs, a lot of information um, hasn't been provided to you. So you are most likely don't know um, how much shells you need or what type of shells. Um, but this can cause your crab to go shellless, which would be um, another crab um, shell jacking it. Um, also, if your crab has been changing um, from one shell to another, another crab can come and take it away from them. And um, sometimes the crab can change into the shell and not feel comfortable in it. And usually if they don't, they go back into their old shell. And if another crab grabs it, then he's left without a shell. That has been um, uh, certain situations. Um, Another thing that can cause a crab to go shellless would be irritation. Um, hermit crabs carry brackish water in their shells, but sometimes things can get lodged inside their shell and cause them irritation. Um, so we want to make sure that um, when um, we um, find the, our crab in that situation, that they can, um, we can rinse them out very well before going forward. So here we have guarding. Guarding is another form of mating behavior. Um, so here um, the male will guard the female. Usually this will happen um, after she comes up from a molt. Um, he will... Um, find his female and he will follow her around um, until um, he can mate with her. Um, at first, it can look a little aggressive, um, but this um, this is not aggressive. Um, I would suggest just um, staying around, stay close and take, um, take your cameras out if you like, and you can record just to make sure that nothing um, turns into aggression. Um, if she does not give in, he will follow her around the tank. Um, and it's completely normal. He is he wants to mate with her um, and he will follow her until she submits. Um, with the mating, um, like I mentioned, um, he will guard her until they can mate. Here on this video, on the left, you can see um, she has submitted and he will flip her over shell side up um, and he is just gently holding her shell down um, until he can mate with her. Um, it's all gentle. And then you can see in the center, the female is carrying her eggs. Typically, this will um, she will carry them for about 30 days until she can spawn. Here on the right side, you will see these are uh, baby Zoe's. Um, she has spawned. Um, very fascinating.
So here we have roosting. Roosting um, is, uh, for safety. Um, this crab here has um, is carrying eggs and she wants to get to the highest point of the tank to protect her eggs to keep them safe from the other crabs. Um, other reasons why a crab will roost um, is to get high and dry. We know that our base tank is um, is very moist and very warm, um, you know, very warm, um, not dry at all. So they want to go to the top of the tank and they want to get dry. The higher it is, the heat rises. It's also warm, especially on winter nights. Um, it will be high and dry and it will be much warmer on the topper. Um, if you have a topper. Um, usually sometimes when um, I would see this kind of behavior with my captive bred babies, um, when in the summertime, usually when we get those bad thunderstorms, um, they will get to the highest point of the tank. And it's funny because th they can sense the vibrations on the substrate. Um, so they will feel... Um, the sounds and the vibrations through um, the substrate, and they will climb to the top highest point of the tank. So now we have here a sick crab. Um, what can cause a crab to be sick would be um, a bad diet, for one. Um, if you are feeding your crabs um, um, the store-bought foods, um, they will um, make them sick over time for sure. Um, a lot of those um, chemicals that are used in those foods will make them sick, which is something we don't recommend. Um, then also can be damaged gills. Hermit crabs have modified gills, so they do need um, a proper enclosure, completely sealed tank um, with 75 to 85 heat and humidity. Um, in order for them to be able to breathe, they do need those safe numbers. Um, over time, if they don't have those safe numbers, um, they will have damage to their gills and will be sick. Um, there can also be physical stress. Physical stress, like we mentioned before, um, when you first purchased your crabs, um, if you purchase them, they can come um, sick, hurt, um, we can just imagine the things that they've been through. Um, so it can be a quite a bit of physical stress. Um, and sometimes it's just too much for them to deal with and they can't make it. Um, then there's poor conditions. Um, I mentioned before, um, they need a proper enclosure. They need um, a proper substrate in order to maintain the heat and the humidity um, at safe levels in their tank. And they need at least six six inches of substrate. Uh, we recommend five part uh, children's play sand and one part cocoa fiber, thoroughly mixed um, and even throughout the tank um, or three times the size of your largest crab. It's very important that we have um, salt uh, marine of uh, salt pools and freshwater pools and they do need to be primed um, just to remove um, the chemicals from the water should so make it safe for them to drink. Um, so that all those things come into play and in, um, how your crab can get sick. This crab here went through um, pretty much um, a lot of stress. Um, unfortunately, this was a rescue. Um, he came from um, a person that had quite a bit of crabs and she had no choice but to evacuate her home. So she did have to put them all in one small enclosure. Um, and it, it was way too much for this crab to handle. Um, he did pass after a week. Here we have pecking order. Pecking order is just a form of them communicating with each other and establishing um, who is in charge of um, whatever it is. And in this case, they were being, um, they were, he was claiming his shells. Um, hermit crabs are territorial by nature. So, um, especially if you're introducing a new crab into the colony, this is more likely to happen during this time. I also mentioned after a molt, 
um, when they're freshly molted, this can happen as well. Um, usually they would spread their legs out, um, spreading their arms like we would like this. So um, that is one form. Antenna wars, so they're flicking each other or even pushing. All of that is non-aggressive. Um, it's always good to be present when this is happening, just so you can keep an eye and make sure that it doesn't turn into aggression. <clears throat> If you would like to know a little bit more about what we spoke about today, you can always go on to crabstreetjournal.com. Um, we have some amazing resources and lots of information on there that would help you get you started uh, or explaining um, things um, that we have spoken about. Um, if you also need help with anything, you can always join us on our um, Lycos Facebook group. Um, we would be happy to help you with anything you need there. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for watching this talk. Um, it has been a pleasure. And I also want to say thank you to Mary Akers for giving me this opportunity to bring this talk to you guys. I hope to see you guys all next year in CrabCon.